Anthony, it's been a few months since we've seen each other. Lovely to see you again and a great opportunity to talk about sustainability, energy transition and all uh, things digital that make it possible. Absolutely. Thanks, no, Roger. Also, same. Uh, pleasure to be, to be here with you today. So now the rubber is hitting the road on all of these commitments. What are you seeing as some of the practical challenges uh, that need to be overcome? Yeah, that's a great question, Roger. So really for, for this energy transition to happen, we need to shift the energy system towards electricity. Also, we're going to need more power, and this power needs to come from more carbon-free uh, generation source type, right? So, but for all of this to happen, we then need to have a grid, a power grid, that is able to accommodate this, to bring this new generation to the point of consumption. And if we take the case of, for example, the US, we know that a lot of renewable sources, wind or solar, is actually available in the middle of the country, while that electricity is needed on the West Coast and the East Coast, right? So as we add more renewable energy, that energy by definition changes all the time as clouds pass in the sky, the wind goes down. We will need to deploy technology that will allow us to manage this intermittency uh, of the renewable energy. So really uh, a, a lot of investment and a big change in front of us, but I have no doubt based on on, on, on what we see in Itachi Energy, then, then, then we can do it. You see your customers also making that that energy transition uh, shift, but also meeting their own obstacles. So tell me a little bit more about those obstacles that you see with your customers. Yeah, Anthony, no doubt you talked about the energy and electrification. They also have the compound problem of everything manufacturing that goes along with it. So the whatever operates on the factory floor, the carbon that it produces, the facilities themselves, so they are sort of wrestling. Uh, with all of that today. Sustainable organizations over long term perform much better uh, than the non-sustainable counterparts. But uh, the reality is, in a world where top lines and bottom lines are continuously challenged, to really lean in uh, with investments up front is difficult for a lot of the customers. So they're trying to figure out how to pace this properly so that they can meet the targets that they have set up. The other thing that I've heard quite a bit is lack of transparency. It's the fact that the systems and the data lakes and the ability to report out and read in is really not where it needs to be because we were not built to report on things such as this. So a lot of my customers are going through the journey of making sure that their systems are correct, that their data is right, so that they can be transparent to the world around them in terms of what they're doing. Do you already see today real applications where AI is really helping your customers, again, in their journey uh, of towards a uh, a carbon-free future. Yeah, I would say, uh, Anthony, you know, the enterprise-level adoption of AI, as you know, is still quite low. However, what I have seen with my customers is they're definitely moving away from the proof of concept uh, to real proof of value and to really having those industry-oriented use cases implemented. For example, for a packaging company, we reduced the amount of material that is needed to create custom packaging by 60%. That impacts the carbon that they produce, uh, and so on and so forth. So what I have seen my customer value is real domain knowledge combined with the technical skills of AI. Being a generalist in the AI space is not very useful. You want to be an expert in energy, in transportation, in logistics, in automotive, whatever you're good at, that is where you really want to fight your battles and that is where you can deliver value. How about uh, on the energy side, where is technology making the real difference? And by the way, is AI real in your world or is it a lot of hype? It's a good question. Uh, sometimes it feels like I don't have a meeting with the customers without the subject of AI coming up. So it's clearly front and center in our, in our customers' mind. If I take the example of utility customers around the world, especially when it comes to the massive adoption of renewable energy. Deploying at scale digital technology is essential to keep our grid stable, resilient, and reliable and secure. Then when it comes to AI, we start to see a number of applications. And like you say, you need to bring, really to bring an AI solution that, uh, that, that really brings value, you need to bring an, an OT capability and an IT capability, right? And that's what we've been able to, to, to do and help our customer with. One example I'll give is, is the uh, vegetation management solution that we've developed uh, uh, between uh, our, our, our respective businesses where we are using um, satellite images together with AI to help our utility customers 
help prevent wildfires. These solutions allow our customers to dispatch their crew where they are needed the most urgently. Very exciting. It's interesting, you know, you and I collectively in our businesses have a lot of customers who are in the farming and agricultural space. And uh, I had a really interesting conversation with, with one executive in one of those companies. And I said, what is your biggest challenge? And he said, supply chain. And I said, okay, why is supply chain, what's behind that problem? And he said, what's really behind that problem is the weather that they cannot accurately enough predict the weather to get their forecast right of what they will need and when. And now when you think about sort of not just AI, but concepts like accelerated computing, the work that is being done today, et cetera, it's starting to make things possible that were not possible before just because we did not have A, enough knowledge or B, enough power to really handle some of these more complex problems, I think. I would say Really now we see really the, the right level of conversation with our customers where, where we're able to look beyond the two, three years time horizon, which we have in conversation with customers you know, in terms of 15 years horizon. And as a result of that, we announced now since the beginning of 2024 that we will invest $6 billion as Itachi Energy to expand our capacity of the factories to, to hire more people, to continue to invest heavily on R&D. Uh, for the next three years. And that's really based on the conversation that we've had with our customers. If we really want to accelerate the deployment of, 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 of the technology that we need to meet our, our net zero target, then we really need to, to, to plan in advance when it comes to uh, the planning of your energy system the planning of your, your factory that you need, the planning of the people that you will need. Six billion dollars, I guess that makes it as about as real as can be. So uh, incredible commitment. What is your vision for that 15 years from now, right? You mentioned that time horizon. Are you optimistic? How do you see the market changing in that time? I think today we see, we see the, 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 that, that we are collectively as an industry taking the right step. We cannot deploy at the speed at which we need to deploy using the old recipe, Absolutely. right? And so, so here we see a change in the mindset um, as an industry. So thinking long-term partnership with customers. We need to go not alone. We need to think long-term. We need to invest long-term. Absolutely. Well, very excited. I, I think, you know, from my point of view also, the challenges are significant. However, the tools that we have at our disposal today in terms of digital technology is not what we had 10 years ago. So from that point, the opportunity is that much greater as well. I think the physical world is digitizing at such an incredible pace that we have never seen before. It's almost exponential. There used to be a very clear separation in the past. You had your physical, you had your OT, and then you had your digital, which was IT. And these were very separated worlds. I think the acceleration of the connection that uh, you had mentioned and uh, the interoperability between those two worlds is at a pace that we have never seen before. Absolutely, and we see, just to take an example, the digital twin, right? Yes. We hear a lot about that, but really it brings value. But we see that ahead of, of, of when we prepare the deployment of a project that really helps us to optimize the design, that really helps our customers and ourselves to, to make sure that we really optimize the use and the, and, 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 and the life of those assets. So Anthony, I'm very fascinated by the industry that you're in now. Where do you see yourself in 2030? Where is the industry going and are you optimistic about where it's heading? I am optimistic, uh, really, and based on, on, on what I see today. I think we will see a grid really that has expanded because I am convinced that there will be no energy transition without transmission grid. So what does it mean is that we will see a grid in 2030 that is more resilient, flexible, and secure. And also, we will see uh, a, a huge increase in carbon-free generation, feeding that grid to ultimately uh, deliver on the promise of the electrification of our economy that, that we need to meet our, our net zero target. So uh, I am optimistic that uh, we will get there. Uh, and I think this is a really uh, exciting couple of years that we have ahead of us to, uh, to, to execute on that as, as an industry. Terrific. Well, listen, I really enjoyed the time we spent today, and uh, I look forward to the collaboration and the partnership between our organizations to get us on these journeys. Same here, Roger. Thanks for having me. I really uh, enjoyed the conversation. Mm -hmm.